The majority leader. Karibu. I will not use the other title. <laughs> not here. <laughs> the live on social media. So you are ready? Yeah. Good. Two questions. One one six. One one eight. Mr. Speaker, let me also touch on particular causes of the escalation of food prices from 2022 and 2023. Mr. Speaker, the country has experienced a prolonged period of drought over the last two and a half years. From the year 2020 to 2023, which has been recorded as the worst drought in 40 years. The performance of the 2022 long rains was poor in parts of the country, which was followed by crop failure in the assals during the short rain season. The anticipated relief from the October, November, December 2022 short rains season was not realized, except for pulses due to the prolonged drought that resulted in a sixth failed rain season. This scenario reduced the annual maize production, creating a higher national deficit of about 34% in 2022, compared to 28% in 2021. Mr. Speaker, I would like to let the, the House know that the country recorded the lowest maize production in 10 years, the lowest production of maize in 10 years. We managed to get, as a nation, 34.4 million bags, which is 3.1 million metric tons in 2022. Ordinarily, uh, we would be talking about close to 50 million bags or 48 million bags, but we got 34. The country also lost approximately 2.5 million heads of livestock due to the drought effects. Mr. Speaker, it is therefore important to note that the onset of the current rain season and associated flash floods has also occasioned further loss of life, livestock of a known value, and a planned rapid assessment will determine the actual cause. That means the government is planning to have a rapid assessment to determine the actual loss. There is the question of what kind of time it will take to recover. I want to be very honest to this House and to the Kenyan people. And having had an opportunity to have served as a Minister for Finance before in a moment of crisis, I want to state to the Kenyan people that we are in this for a long haul. The whole, the circumstances that we are in cannot be wished away like instant coffee. And I've said this quite a number of times. We are going to have good focus on priorities and have them sustained consistently religiously and from a personal perspective we need to be prepared to have about two years of challenges as Kenyans. But there is hope because it is in that process of sustained good policies consistently being put in place and we looking at them and working from a unified viewpoint as Kenyans we shall be able to turn around the economy. Remember, I have highlighted the huge public debt. I have highlighted the exogenous factors like the Ukraine war. We have, for instance, no capacity to determine when the Russia-Ukraine war will come to an end. It's beyond us. It will take a lot of international effort and the goodwill of the combatants to be able to deal with that. So 
we have to be realistic uh, as leaders uh, to the people who give us an opportunity to serve them that it will take uh, a bit of time. And uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I want to say that no situation is permanent. No situation is permanent. Even the challenging times that we are going through now shall be overcome. They shall be overcome. And I want us to, to believe in that. Mr. Speaker, the overall inflation did, did not behave well. The Kenya National Bureau of Statistics indicate that in uh, 2002, the inflation was around 7.9%, and it peaked in October 2022 to 9.6%, and in March it has declined slightly to 9.2% March this year. Uh, inflation was pushed by the following factors. Higher food prices resulting from reduced agricultural production and the drought effects. Global supply chains were disrupted mainly by the Russian and Ukraine, Russia Ukraine conflicts. Higher prices of imports were also pushed by the dollar effect and the supply constraints globally. And equally, Mr. Speaker, uh, equally, Mr. Speaker, the higher global oil prices and elimination of subsidies for petrol and the substantive reduction of diesel and kerosene on account of unsustainability of the cost of maintaining the subsidy program. All these, Mr. Speaker, were a major cause of the changing prices of fuel and other commodities. The second item that caused an escalation of these foods, Mr. Speaker, is physical distress. Mr. Speaker, in a layman's language, the message I'm putting across here is that our public finances are not in good order. And, in, and it is a fact that we can no longer deny. Mr. Speaker, I also want to state that some of the measures we have pronounced here and many others are geared towards stabilizing the economy and in attracting foreign direct investment. We have, for instance, the special economic zones which are being put, whether we are looking at, at the coast. We have seen measures uh, where uh, pronouncements uh, from the national government are encouraging counties to also set up uh, industrial zones and the national government will match the funds they put on the table to be able to grow industrial zones all over the country in our 47 uh, counties among others. Uh, sound monetary policy, uh, uh, the rule of law, the rule of law, because if there are people marching in the streets uh, with mungiki and uh, guns, uh, surely those people are not attracting foreign direct investment, let, let alone local investment. So these are the kind of things that we say uh, we have to grow out of those awkward practices and be able to move forward and get the country off its feet. Mr. Speaker, uh, the issue of housing, which was raised, to the best of my knowledge, no tax has been effected. I think there is a misinterpretation of a message that went out that we want to grow savings. And to grow savings, the issue was what becomes the co contribution of the employer and the employee to the NSSF fund. That was the message. And I think it was then distorted to give the impression that we are talking about taxing uh, uh, for the low-cost housing. I hope that helps resolve uh, that particular ma um, issue.